have time finding my chat now. I'll, I'll find it. Um, Prop one grant is due in like a week uh, and it's, it's focused on environmental justice projects. Um, and that, that one's for like, um, it has to be like a minimum of $300,000. Um, and you have to have some sort of like applied application to the work that you're doing. Um, then there's the California EPA environmental justice funding that's like $50,000 and seems a little bit more open to different kinds of projects. Um, it seems like with the Prop 1, they're really interested in building something, some new like group or infrastructure. And then um, the uh, People Lab at Berkeley, this innovation projects, that one's for I think like 100,000 and that needs a, to have a partner, um, a government partner that has a question um, uh, that they want people to address through innovation. Um, so that one I think would be really good for this group to explore. I guess I can, um, the questions that I have are, have are people, are these on people's radars right now? Is anybody applying for projects? Um, I can talk briefly about some of the ideas that we're thinking about applying for together too but maybe I'll stop there. Yeah, thank you, Wynn, for introducing that. Um, so uh, I know that, that Wynn, Shelley, and I have had this discussion, but I wondered if others have given any thought to these proposals. Are there things in the works? We, if you don't feel comfortable talking about it, that's fine too. You can just say, we're working on something, but we, we can't really talk about it right now. That's fine. Uh, just wondering if others are are eyeing these opportunities. So Tony, I did want to say that uh, Wynn and I will be meeting with the uh, the homeless encampment group tomorrow to discuss ideas for project um, and. Uh, we've, 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 we've got some preliminary ideas, but we haven't vetted them out. And, and so I'm not going to share them, but they do have data components, which it might be good to pull in some of the data group for um, in, in, in um, thinking about it and also for coming up with ideas of how we can incorporate uh, different types of data into the whatever we come up with, whatever ideas we come up with. That's great. So we might, I guess, given the timelines of these proposals, we, we, we don't have the luxury of kind of waiting until our next meeting. So we should anticipate that there will, if people are interested, and maybe we can just get a sense of whether people might be interested in such a thing. If so, then we would need to uh, either convene a, a, a meeting in, during this interim period or spin off a, a subgroup who would be charged with, um, with helping to craft this proposal. So. Yeah, so the, the, the OPC deadline, which is next week, is actually just for a letter of intent. So our plan is to get a letter of intent in um, with not necessarily having worked out all the details yet um, as far as who's going to participate and all that stuff. If we get invited for a full proposal, that's when we'll, we'll start um, having those serious conversations about who all will be involved in and in, um, talking uh, money and tasks and those kinds of things. So right now it's just coming up with the idea, getting it on paper, getting, getting a, a small core group of people together that want to participate in it and, and turn in the letter of intent. Great. Yeah. Welcome, Dr. Novotny. Good to see you. Thank you. I had another call I just got off of. Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. We are at this at this time talking about different uh, funding opportunities. Um, the idea, idea being that, you know, there, there may be ways to in, inject um, a, a kind of focus and, and also funds into some of the work that we're doing here in this group. Um, and we could help support some, some meaningful projects related to trash. So maybe, maybe the kind of action item, uh, unless people wanted to 
have an immediate discussion, but it seems like maybe the action item would be for people to um, look at these opportunities on their, you know, asynchronously on their own. Um, and then uh, if they have questions, they can direct them to, should they direct them to Wynn or Shelly or me? I'm assuming that it would come to, to Shelly or Wynn. That would be fine. Is the thought that we would, as a group, participate, or it just kind of depends on if, if people, I, um, I'm just not clear on how uh, we'd interact as a group. Yeah, so my, my thought is that um, you can, people can participate as, as part of the group, or they can choose not to, it's, it's up to them. Uh, but I, I would like to see us jointly develop the ideas for the projects uh, moving forward so that we have some cohesion and some consistency in what we're working towards. Um, as far as, as, as the actual proposal, it will, actually, it will depend on who wants to participate and, and, and what they're looking to get out of it. Thanks. Could I add one to this list? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, just briefly. Well, first of all, the state health department uh, is interested in, in tobacco related trash. You guys have done, you know, a lot of great work on this with the, with the uh, monitoring project. So, I mean, they, they may yet still want to have more of that. I, I don't know that they'll have like a formal call for proposals, but they're certainly interested in the subject. And I, I'm working on two projects with them now on uh, separately. And the second organization is the, uh, the uh, Tobacco Related Disease Research Program, which is administered by the UC system, uh, Office of the President. And um, they are interested in tobacco trash. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to have a, a specific calls for proposals, which will be in July. So we can keep an eye on that. Uh, but one of the things that I think is gonna be important to um, address specifically along those lines, and I'm encouraging them to really, you know, carve this out is microplastics related to the filters and the, the lack of efficacy of the filter. And so that's something I'm gonna be uh, dealing with in this white paper project that I have for the state health department. But I, I, I hope that there will be a, uh, an opportunity to look at that as a specific uh, issue, the plastics piece uh, as it relates to tobacco and tobacco product waste. Because we don't know enough about what what's there from tobacco waste or how, how to measure it even um, in, as a microplastics. Well, that's right in our interest, right in our wheelhouse. So um, Shelly would be a, a strong point of contact there. Wynn and, and Shelly, I, you know, it's, um, I think we would be interested in participating via this group in a supporting role and perhaps provide some analytical support for whatever was uh, proposed. I don't, um, I guess it would depend on what roles were would depend on the idea, but um, just saying from, from our side, yeah, we're totally open to participation in such a project. Awesome. Yeah. And for those who can't go after this funding for one reason or another, I mean, like conflicts of interest or you know, your employer just doesn't um, uh, allow you to go after grants of these types. Um, I think the role that you could play is, is like an advisory role on these grant proposals and helping us to make sure that they're going to benefit projects that you're working on and, and agenda items that you have. So if, if you have interest in that then, or ideas, um, those things would be great to kind of uh, talk about. That sounds good, Win. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, the innovative one with the partnership, um, with the, I don't know, the city, state or um, county, uh, agency seems interesting. I don't know what innovative uh, solution we have or her question we have, but um, I'd be for sure interested in that one. Oh, great. I was hoping you say that.
I mean, would this group be somewhere that proposal ideas would, I, I guess the timing doesn't really work. It would just, it would have to be offline discussion of ideas for a proposal, so. Right. Yeah, I think I think for this group meeting, we're just trying to gauge interest in, and then and then we'll do all of the grant writing and hashing all those details out offline because for some people probably don't want to be involved and we won't necessarily. Um, but I, I think that the the projects, um, you know, we'll we'll like keep people updated in this group about the projects because um, they'll be they'll be very relevant to our work for sure. Like all the things we're thinking about propose, proposing will be, um, but we won't have to like go through all of the details and writing up grants and stuff like that here. Actually, when I was gonna suggest, maybe we have a meeting that's just a brainstorming meeting uh, to come up with some ideas. So we have some ideas in our back pocket as more and more funding opportunities come up. Great. Yeah, that's. I think that's a great idea. Um, as far as these specific opportunities go, um, there are varied uh, due dates. Um, we also have to bear in mind the different budget limits, which will dictate kind of the shape of what comes out of them. Uh, but another key factor that I, I think really needs to be in focus is the, uh, the target audience for each of them. So let's take, for example, the, the EPA one is, is really about um, the environmental justice community uh, being the kind of target of support. So um, that looks different from, let's say, a, a question from a government agency that demands a, a form of innovation, which is the Berkeley one, right? So we just need to make sure that we're um, uh, framing the ideas around the audience that, it, that the project would serve. So just to kind of bear in mind the ways that, I mean, those are some of the major breakpoints of the uh, uh, distinguishing those opportunities. That's a great point. And uh, Tom, just a quick clarification. When you said that there's um, there will be an R uh, RFP with uh, uh, focusing on July, is that when they are due or is that when the RFP is issued? That's when it's issued. Okay, all right. Yeah, it'd be due probably in the fall somehow. Do you, are you kind of on the inside track where you know what the RFP is gonna be before it comes out? Like, are you kind of thinking, because sometimes it's nice to have that extra lead time uh, if you have a good sense of what they're gonna be asking. Yeah, because I've been talking with the uh, project officers. Uh, that's why I know there's gonna be stuff on tobacco product waste for sure. Yeah. I don't know what the shape of that will be, but I'll, I'll maybe be able to get a little uh, sense of that here shortly. Um, uh, just because I know that this is this they they like this the whole environmental perspective on on tobacco issues. Great. Shelley, I wonder. Um, uh, you know, I, I think it might be um, appropriate to share an update about what is going on with the microplastics conceptual model, since um, I'm just dovetailing off something that 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 uh, Dr. Navani mentioned with related related to the microplastics and tobacco related uh, disease and environmental impacts. Is there anything you can say about the upcoming work on the conceptual model? Yeah, you know, and that's the first thing that came across my mind was. Uh, the work that's being done on that. Um, so uh, SFEI is, is working on conceptual models for uh, three different um, three different items. And, and one of those are the, um, the microfibers that come from cigarette filters. Uh, so we're, we're looking at uh, how the uh, fibers would uh, basically enter the environment and then travel through the environment and where the OPC is interested in, in ultimately in uh, developing management actions to control the, the source of those fibers and, and putting uh, efforts into areas where they can make the highest impact. And I think some of you are going to be part of the meeting next week. I think it's on the 21st. 
Um, and, and we will be going over those conceptual models. So there's three conceptual models, the, the cigarette um, uh, fibers the, from the filters, um, uh, microfibers themselves um, from, from other, um, other products, and then uh, single use plastic foodware items is the, the third um, conceptual model we're working on right now. Yeah, I, I know about the OPC's interest. Yeah, they're, they're uh, definitely interested in that paper I'm, I'm working on now, so. Yeah, we're glad that you can participate in the workshop. Yeah. Thank you for making time for that. <clears throat> yeah, I signed up for it. It's, it's all day long. <laughs> Is it all day long, Shelley? I didn't realize that. Yeah, let me check, let me check the calendar. I think it's from, I wanna say nine to, nine to four. Something like that, yeah. Mm. I'm sure there'll be a five minute break, you know, <laughs> along the way. Yeah, it's nine to four. But it's, yeah. I, I, it's part of an RMP uh, meeting, so um, it's, it's- Do you know if there's a special time that they'll be talking about the, the filter piece? Do you know that? Yeah, there will be. I believe it's, it's uh, I'll have to look it up, but I'll, I'll let you know what time it is. Yeah, because I, I have some other stuff I have to do, but you know, I'll get in on it, I'm sure. Yeah, so, so the conceptual models are just part of, of that whole meeting. Okay. Well, so maybe a, a good next step will follow up with uh, with uh, Gary and Tom on um, or who, who would all like to be involved in the brainstorming session for um, for ideas for these trying to uh, fund on these projects. I saw a couple hands raised. All right, all right. Maybe most people, or should, we could just send out a doodle poll for a time, and then and then uh, have that brainstorming session. Yeah, maybe you can send out the doodle poll for to the whole group and say, yeah, who's, you know, if you're interested, fill it out by such, such and such a date. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, we'll just try and make clear that it's optional that. A lot of times people just fill out the doodle poll automatically when they see there's a solicitation. So we'll we'll make sure that we say you don't have to unless you want to. Because the rest of these meetings are very mandatory. They are very mandatory. Are you serious? Wait, I don't have to show up? Um, yeah, so um, <laughs> you're right. I guess we don't have to be here. But we appreciate you all showing up so regularly. And thank you, Nick. We didn't welcome welcome you, Nick. Uh, but thank you. We we made you cry. Thanks. <laughs> That's a funny um, comment. Good good to be good to have you. Um, all right. So um, sounds great. The next steps will be a, a brainstorming as, and and focusing really on some of the the near term uh, deliverables of that letter of intent for the for that OPC project. But thinking about all the different potential projects we could work on. Yeah, that one's coming up real soon. So these doodle polls will be like for tomorrow and the following days. Well, I don't know, Shelly, how you feel about that, but maybe I don't I don't know if we're gonna be able to have that brainstorming before that letter. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't I don't know that it's necessary before the OPC one. Okay, okay. Um, but but the certainly the, the June ones with Berkeley, I think Ju Berkeley yeah. is June fifteenth, and I think uh, the EPA ones are um, the end of June. Okay, and then if we get invited for a bigger, uh, for the full um, uh, letter, then we can we can have a brainstorming session for that one after. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Glad we cleared that up. <laughs> and that's such a fast turnaround for that one. Only one month. Never had a racist click before. Cool. All right. Sweet. Shall we um, move on to our next agenda item? Is there anything else anybody want to talk about with those? 
Uh, thank you, Jana, for the uh, link to the, the calculator. That, uh, that's very handy. Um, this is this is the um, this is related to enough that Jana provided at the very beginning of the meeting, where, where she talked about that Walker um, uh, Associates is, is uh, Michael Baker and Associates. Sorry, um, Michael Baker International. Sorry, Jana. All good. All good. <laughs> apologies. Uh, I'm going to the low tech mind and I, I just got mixed up. Um, so uh, that you're you're working on um, this calculator and using it um, how to uh, help help with uh, compliance um, and as assessing equivalency to trash capture. Um, so thank you for for that reference there. This is an EOA provided calculator. Correct. Yeah, EOA slash BASMA. Yeah. So thank you to our BASMA EOA partners on for that resource. And thanks for referring us to that. Um, let's let's talk, let's uh, shift, um, shall we, uh, Win to the um, next agenda items. Uh, we were going to talk a little bit about the kind of uh, reviewing some of the outputs from the citizen science meeting. So this has been two months since we've met kind of on our own. And that's because last month, as you will all recall, was a joint meeting of the data management subcommittee and the citizen science sub subcommittee. So um, really a lot of that was an opportunity to hear from the citizen science subcommittee and for us to, um, to kind of uh, listen to a, a, a lot of their their needs. Uh, Shelly and I presented on the the playbook as well, um, but it would be um, we thought that it it's probably worthwhile for us to debrief on on the meeting and see if you had any reactions, any surprises that came up as a result of um, hearing from the San Diego River Parks uh, Foundation or. Um, or some of uh, Wynn's presentation. Um, it would just, we just figured that you might wanna share, we wanted to give you the opportunity to share your reactions to either the playbook or any of these other um, uh, presentations that were delivered at that meeting. Do you all remember the meeting? <laughs> I was going to say, I thought all the presentations were awesome. Yeah, yeah. Really good presentations. I, um, I guess one of my big reactions from the, from the meeting was that I felt like I just wanted more time for discussion, you know, and, and I felt like we didn't, we didn't have that. And then it felt rushed at the end. So then there was, you know, everyone was kind of like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to go first. Everyone's like, no, no, you go first. You kind of experience at the end there. So um, I don't know, hopefully it was, um, or maybe it would be good to do another one of those, but make it way more just focused on let's have a talk. Yeah, I was feeling like we could have, we could have doubled the length of the meeting and still had more, you know, we could have featured a number of different uh, tools in addition to the ones that we were talking about. So it was, um, it did feel a bit compressed, even though it was a longer meeting than our usual. Um, so I share that, that feeling uh, when. I was really interested in that San Diego River Parks Foundation, um, some of the work that they were doing there. That was, uh, that was really, really cool to see what, they're, um, what they've been up to. And uh, I assume you, you all shared that impression. Yeah, I thought their mapping tools and and just some of the the ways of presenting their information was was really good. Yeah, they're sort of like the holy grail of community monitoring programs where they have funding and support from all sorts of different agencies. And I think that they more than anything highlight the need that to have coordination across several different agencies, social agencies, you know law enforcement, landowners. It's not just 
it can't just be one element. It's got to be a bunch of elements, which I think they do. She does, Sarah does a really good job of emphasizing. Uh, from that meeting, I, my perspective was I just didn't, I didn't feel like they had it came with uh, necessarily direct questions for you guys. So it was like you guys presented all the great work you were doing and then they didn't have it's almost it, it reminded me of some of the council meetings <laughs> where it's like you present information and try to get feedback, but they weren't really prepared and understanding what the information was going to be. So they weren't kind of ready for real questions. And I think the feedback that you may have wanted or to hear about, OK, what are your needs? Like, how would these things do these scratch the surface of things that you're experiencing, or do you think that these could be applied to some of the work that's being done um, on the ground? Um, so I felt like that was sort of lacking. So I'd be interested almost to hear what they were thinking. Like if they, did they was there any follow-up? Did they leave um, with a bunch of questions that maybe you guys got uh, offline? I don't know, just, it's, but it, well, you're right. It was rushed at the end. It seemed like when things were really starting to kind of get moving and the momentum was happening, then the meeting was over. Yeah. 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 I felt, I felt that too. Um, th to, to answer your question directly, there was no follow up to me. I mean, I didn't, I don't think I received any, any offline questions. I don't know, Shelly, if you got any questions. I'm seeing shaking heads from Wynn. Um, no, I didn't get any. It, it, it's probably that they needed maybe a month to digest uh, the, the presentations. And so we'll, we'll maybe get the questions uh, maybe in a few days. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I think they just, I think they're just, they're less, they're not as active as this group. You know, this group meets pretty frequently and is actively working on on projects. And I think it's just less so um, for that one. I think it, it, for multiple reasons, but some of them are like, it's been hard to get out and do sampling. It's hard to, you know, with the, the pandemic environment, it's been just something that maybe they, you know, the first couple of meetings didn't highlight some like ongoing projects. So I think that that's part of it too. They just the work that you guys are doing um, is happening on a, in a much uh, faster pace than, than theirs. Yeah, and it will be interesting to kind of sync up, not even, uh, you know, we, we have two other subcommittees, the citizen science and then the homelessness or unhoused um, subcommittee as well. And uh, you know, Shelly and when you talked about wanting to get together with the, with that second committee, second subcommittee to, um, uh, to brainstorm or to, to, to frame the letter of intent related to um, some of these proposals coming up. So I think that that offers yet another audience and another opportunity. Um, uh, it, it, it's not, maybe it's not community based science, but uh, in in many ways it is when you're when you're focusing on on homeless encampments and things of this nature so there is an overlap there there's like a venn diagram of common commonality with the other two sub subcommittees so i i'm really interested to to hear what comes out of those discussions that you're holding with them and and how different different tools uh and and how the our our subcommittee the data subcommittee might help to Kind of actualize some of the um, some of the solutions that that might might contribute to 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 the goals of that subcommittee. So um, so I'm still I whether it's with the the community based science, citizen science subcommittee or the or the homeless and homelessness uh, subcommittee. Um, I think there are there are opportunities on either side. So so we'll, we'll see which one bites first. And it could very well be that one that the engagement with one kind of leads to a deeper engagement with the other, right? As they see example, more examples of how this can kind of get moving, get off the ground, especially with new funding coming in to accelerate the progress. Um, I think it could be really helpful. Definitely. <clears throat> I should just mention really quickly while we're talking about the citizen science group that uh, last week I had a brief discussion with uh, um, with uh, two members two um, two members of the literati team. So when I know you're you're always working with literati and 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 their and, and some of their data and you were celebrating the fact that their data are made public. Um, yeah. They they wanted to have a conversation with me to. See a little bit about uh, where there might be opportunities 
to compare notes on, particularly on our, on our algorithm. I uh, referred them to Aaron Heyman, uh, you know, the, one of the uh, leads for the citizen science uh, subcommittee since the, uh, they, um, uh, since they used li the literati tools. So I wanted them to compare notes because Aaron is already using those tools, the literati tools and literati is interested to learn a little bit more about how their tools are being used. Um, so, uh, uh, and another thing just to mention um, is I was very, I was very transparent with them. Um, bearing in mind some of the things I learned in the course of talking with uh, Dr. Novotny about uh, funding uh, and about where their money comes from. So I said that I did have concerns about their proximity to uh, PMI, Philip Morris International, and I wanted to get their read on that. And uh, they, um, they suggested that they are very, that they, that, that is a funder, but it's one of many and they, then that funder does not influence their, their approach. Um, so that, um, that was their response. I'm just sharing it with you. I'm sure they, that is not something held in confidence. So um, that's uh, just some, something to bear in mind uh, is that uh, um, the, the, you know, Philip Morris does fund uh, literati and um, their response is that it doesn't influence the, the nature of the tools. It's one of several funders. It makes Philip Morris look good though. Understood. <laughs> Yeah. But one, one, just one thing on that is, you know, like with this T if TRDRP funding, if they, if literary were mentioned in that grant, um, it would be excluded. So. Yeah. Understood. Do you, do you all understand that? Like what, what, what Dr. Navani is referring to? Can you, can you further no. explain that? No, yeah. The acronyms. The, you know, there's uh, the TRDRP funding um, it, it's come from a, tobacco tax, but it's also uh, very carefully sort of constructed so that there's no, uh, no even tangential contact with tobacco industry interests uh, uh, or groups that have been funded by them even. And there's a lot of them, Ocean Conservancy, for instance, Nature Conservancy, there's a lot of NGOs that have received tobacco funding. And if they were to be involved in a, a grant application as a partner or advisory group or anything, uh, they, you know, the the, it would not pass the uh, conflict of interest a declaration that uh, is uh, uh, required uh, in that funding stream, at least in the state health department as well. So uh, yeah, one has to be you know vigilant about these groups because the, Philip Morris, RGR, all of them are looking to greenwash themselves with their affiliations, and you know they they talk a big game on this uh, PMIs. If you go look on their uh, plastics initiative uh you know they're they make a make a big case about how they're gonna get rid of plastics from their products and you know uh, green processing but the fact of the matter is they're still selling cigarettes they depend on volunteers and people downstream to clean up their mess uh they are not uh interested in, in um, uh, actually stopping the, the sales of products that cause the problem um, and just, just for clarity's sake, um, the acronym that Dr. Novotny was using was Tobacco Related Disease Program. Yeah, that's the UC system that funds research on, on you know, like I said, this uh, July RFP will be from them. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's really important to note. Uh, definitely something to think yeah. about for our... our uh, Feature third, funding. It is a third rail. It is a third rail. <laughs> yeah. They're very good. They're very clever. And they, they, <laughs> they, they are, uh, they're, they're good at what they do. Not for us though. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any further thoughts? on the either last month's meeting or anything we've shared. Um, what, what I might suggest we do, um, I'll just take it as an action item to reach out uh, to Sherry and Aaron and ask them if they have any um, kind of questions that went unanswered. Uh, we might as well 
you know, just connect. And, and I don't know uh, when, if you've had any, uh, or, or Shelly for that matter, any um, further discussions with them about, you know, what would be the next phase of any engagement, but, uh, but I can reach out to them. And I'll also just let them know about some of the things we've been up to, including looking, you know, fr framing different proposals, uh, knowing that um, it may prove to be useful to come back to them at some point in the future and and it, uh, invite their participation in some some type of uh, project moving forward. So I'll just I'll write to them on that. Yes, if you think that's right. Yeah, and that was my intention was to reach out to them as well. Um, so it'd be great to have you uh, do that. Great, thanks. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know, was, did Walter write to everybody or just to me? Uh, yeah, so just to let you know, um, Walter, you who's, who's here, but he's kind of being pulled between different meetings. He's presenting on the other line. So the reason why he's quiet is because he's, he's kind of on stage right now. Um, and, uh, and he's a bit like James Brown and that he keeps being like brought back to the center stage uh, just when you think he, he can't go on so encore <laughs> yeah exactly um but uh but in, in any case we we always welcome walter's uh participation so it's, it's good to it's good to he's at, at least here as an auditor um all right how we doing we have just a few more minutes left yeah, I do have one more announcement about the about our paper. I've been um, I've not been able to take that to the finish line. It is so close, but I got I had like two um, two papers get accepted simultaneously, and both of them had a lot of detailed things I needed to take care of. So I just haven't been able to get to it. And um, anyways, hoping That's within great. the next month, I'm we're gonna be able to submit the trash taxonomy paper um we'll also be reaching out so we've discovered this new uh, this new concept called schema matching tools and essentially that is what we're doing i just didn't have the word for it but that is like the academic word for it and that this has now opened up a pandora's box of like you know all this research around what what we've done so like schemas Basically, a schema is like it's the it's the data set. It's all the columns in the data set, and we're trying to match those columns between a bunch of different data sets. So that's schema matching, and um, there's tons of tools available for that. And I guess we've like kind of reinvented the wheel a little bit because we probably could have learned if if we would have known that word beforehand, probably could have uh, t jumped off of that base. But anyways, I'm doing some research into the schema matching. So for those people who are really data science inclined, um, I might have some follow-up questions with you, from you because we'll need to put our research into the context of how it fits in with the data science as well. I think that's something that's at least missing. And now that we have that word, I feel like it's kind of finished. It's kind of polished, so. That, that's really great. I'm glad that you, you found that. Um, I would be interested though, if there are those tools in an open source format, I'm not sure that there are, that maybe I, I, cause I am aware, I knew that there were tools that could kind of do that, but I thought yeah. that the value proposition for what you were doing is that it would be freely available, available right. to people who maybe couldn't pay the premium price for some commercial product. Yeah. So, you know, cause a lot of times this would have to be mm -hmm. done, you know, at zero expense or something like that. So, um, yeah. Anyway, I just I, I I still think that that I, I I'm kind of rooting for you I'm, yeah, to to keep to maintain the code and keep it moving forward because there are I think some specific things that yours either does or could do that would distinguish it from just an off the shelf uh, schema matching tool. Um, uh, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah, weren't there um, weren't there when weren't there specific sort of like content knowledge based subjective decisions that had to go into some of the way that you built this tool yeah. that right uh, out of the box tool wouldn't wouldn't get at. Also, I, I think harmonization yeah. sounds nice, so I, I don't think it's awful. Yeah. you guys use that word. Yeah, 
I don't think it'll be like a big shift. I think it's just something that that needs to be acknowledged like up front yeah. in in the paper a little bit yeah. better. Right now, kind of like tying in, it's like we have we have everything built out about the methodology, about the applications, of how it can be used. But then it's like, how does this advance the science? That's always the thing, you know, in the for the peer reviewed papers, it's like, well, but how I get that it's useful, but how does it advance the science? <laughs> So. One of the things that one of the, the <laughs> concerns that I raised as a concern, but I think it's also an opportunity, is yeah. if you marked every version of the taxonomy with a with actual version control, so that there's an awareness of how things would be routed if they were put into the tool at this moment in time, which might change over time. So, you know, it's like there might be a new item that's created, a new product, a new brand, a new something, a new decision yeah. made. And then, you know, and that is kind of advancing the science as well, because um, reproducibility is so important. And if you don't have that version control, then you might not be able to go back to see how things would have been classified in yep. 2008 versus 2022, right? Yeah. So I, totally I think that, right. that repro reproducibility of the classification is, is something that you can offer that maybe that schema matching thing can't do. And, right. and also on that front, in terms of advancing the science or making a novel contribution, it, even if it doesn't do that, I, I, I understand what you're saying when it's important to acknowledge the context in which this fits with all that other work. But even if it doesn't push forward on, on that sort of advance, it still makes advances in the way that it's going to create um, sets of data to be used together to address questions that, they, that could not otherwise be addressed without such a tool, you know? That seems like a novel contribution right. to the field in itself. Yeah. So, we're, so I'm rooting for you too. That's Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. But I also feel bad because I didn't call it out as a schema matching tool. Oh, that's okay. I feel like I, feel like I let you down. No, no. But I, I, I'm sure as I start to dig into the field a little bit, just to understand where it's at, I'll have some questions. So I'll... Uh, bounce back with you Tony for sure um okay cool we're coming up to our to our hour we got some next steps um laid out I'll be sending out a doodle poll to everybody totally optional for those who would like to join a brainstorming session um I'm glad that we're having our next meeting in just a month I miss y'all two months is too long <laughs> So see everybody then. All right. See you later. See y'all. Thanks, everybody. Goodbye.